This video is a step-by-step -step guide to fine-tune or train your large language models on raw text. For the purpose of this video, I'll be using this Unsloth tool and I'll be using this tiny stories data set from Hugging Face. I'm going to install all of this in my Google Colab by using the free version and I've already set the runtime to T4 GPU. Now once that's done, the first step we need to do is to install Unsloth. And by the way, you can use all of these commands on any Linux instance. I would suggest you use Ubuntu, but up to you. It will work on all the Linux instances, but make sure that you have at least one GPU of 16 GPU of VRAM. Okay, so as you can see that Unsloth is being installed. So that is done. Now let's specify our model. And you can use any code llama or mistral model for this purpose. Let me use mistral one. And now in the next step, I am just importing few of the libraries from Unsloth to use our fast language models and of course the customary PyTorch. And then I'm setting the max sequence length to 2048. And these are the models which you can use. And I have specified the mistral in 4-bit quantization. Now, you can specify any max sequence length because internally they would still be using rope scaling. Rope scaling stands for rotary positional embedding scaling, which is a technique used in machine learning in the context of transformer models. Rope scaling introduces a way to encode the position of tokens in a sequence to preserve their relative or rotary positions. So this method is primarily an alternative to the traditional positional encoding mechanism now as you can see we are loading it in 4 bit but and d type is none so which will i think for t4 it is float 16 so just leave it as is it is going to use uh, the default values internally so let's run it and it is going to download the model and you can ignore any warnings here for now there you go as you can see that it is loading the model which is around 4.13 gig in size. So let's wait for it to finish. Shouldn't take too long. Now that is done. Now let's add some of the LoRa adapters. And this is a command which is used to uh, load the LoRa adapters by using PEFT model. Now let me run it and while it runs, let me also try to describe it in as simple words as possible. So as you can see that we are using uh, this PEFT command here to do the parameter efficient fine tuning with fast language model. And the model here is we already have given it. And the R stands for the rank of low rank approximation used in LoRa or low rank adaptation. And it determines the size of the bottleneck layer, impacting the model's capacity to learn task-specific adaptation. It could be uh, 16, 8, 32, 64. A higher value increases model's capacity, but also computational cost. So you can even specify 8 to uh, make sure it completes quicker, but as you can see, it already has done. So target modules, it is a list of modules name within the model to apply PEFT. These typically include projection layers in transformer models like QProj, which stands for Query Projection, KProj, Key Projection, VProj, which is Value Projection, and OProj, which is Output Projection. And there are various others. Targeting these modules allows for focused fine-tuning of critical components of the attention mechanism. Then we have this LoRa Alpha which is a scaling factor used in LoRa adjustment. It controls the magnitude of the update up, updates applied to the model weights, affecting how much the fine tuning deviates from the original parameters. And we are adjusting 16. And then LoRa dropouts, which applies to the LoRa adjustment. Setting this to zero means no dropout is applied, ensuring all adjustment contribute to the model's output. Dropout can help prevent overfitting by randomly zero, zeroing parts of the adjustment. But normally I've seen it being set to zero as far as I know. Bias is none which controls whether biases in the targeted modules are adjusted or not. 
so we are not modifying any bias here and then we have this uh, gradient checkpointing which is a boolean value indicating whether to use gradient checkpointing this technique reduces memory usage during training by trading off computational time allowing for training with longer sequences or larger models on limited hardware then we have random state this is an integer seed for random number generation ensuring reproducibility of the fine tuning process it affects the initialization of the modifications and any stochastic process in the fine tuning and i have another video where i describe in detail what stochastic processes just search my channel with the word stochastic and then lastly we have max sequence length which is a maximum sequence length that the model will be able to process okay so we have run it and it has already finished now for the next step let's prepare our data set now for the data set as i already showed you we are going to use that uh, tiny stories like this one so let me first import the data set and then let me specify the data set here and i'm just going to pick up maybe only let's say 50 or maybe even 30 lines just to make it quicker i don't want to spend whole day and i don't have that much uh, capacity compute wise wise okay so as you can see i'm just uh, doing it for 30 okay that is good but you can select as many lines or whole data set as per your choice and this is all raw text it doesn't contain anything it has only one column text that's it no request no responses no par parameter template okay now let's specify our end of uh, uh, token because otherwise it will go on and on indefinitely so let me run it that shouldn't take too long because we have just importing this uh, few lines that is already almost done for 248 one and i'll also show you first five lines once this is done we just for few lines would be good maybe there you go it is just generating the train split that might take a bit of a time so because there is a lot of uh, examples here so we are just splitting it to make it shorter let's wait for this one to finish that part is done and now let me show you a couple of lines from that data set there you go so all text as you can see nothing else just plain raw text and on this one uh, we are going to train our model which we have specified above now in order to train the model let's first initialize this sft trainer and give me a sec i will describe what this means because this is just initializing it it is not running the training and in order to run it all we need to do is to run this uh, initialize trainer here let me click there and then i will describe what this uh, command means because the other one takes bit of a time now here what is happening is that we are initializing this sft trainer for training a model with supervised fine tuning or sft which is of course coming from transformers library model the model which we have specified above train data set means that data set for training which we already have set and then data set text field we are just uh, the column is one only text one tokenizer the tokenizer is used to convert text data into format suitable for the model then max sequence we already know packing a boolean indicating whether to pack short sequence together in a batch to improve training efficiency then we have formatting function which is a function applied to the data set for any necessary pre-processing or formatting now um, we have some arguments these arguments are set of training arguments configuring the training process for example for this per device training batch size um, it's a batch size per device during training and these steps these are number of steps to accumulate gradient before performing a backward update pass then warm-up ratio is proportion of training to increased learning rate max grad norm is a sort of maximum norm of the gradient for gradient clipping then num train epochs this is total number of training epochs i'm just going with one just to keep it short but you can go as much as you want then we have learning rate which is the 2e1 and then um, 
prim- prim- primarily this is a initial learning rate for the optimizer fp16 and bf16 these are uh, fp16 is use 16 bit floating point precision and uh, use uh, for bf16 is b float 16 pre- precision if true and uh, if it is we are only using it if it is supported if not we are not using it logging step is simply interval of steps to log training process or progress and then optim is the optimizer to use so and you can just see that we are using here this uh, adam w underscore 8 bit which is a quite efficient variant of adam w weight decay is coefficient for regularization and then uh, this lr scheduler type is type of learning rate scheduler c simply a random seat for reproducibility and then directory where we are putting the model checkpoints which will be done and meanwhile you can see that our training uh, command is already done to which is great now until this point our model has been trained on all of this and then next step we can run our model by um, just running it on our data set and then we will just give it a simple prompt to see how it goes so let me give you the command to run your new model on some sort of text to see if model is following this new training data set so let me create the code here now if you look at this code what is happening is i'm just importing some of the libraries and text related stuff and then i'm just giving it this prompt which is a once upon a time there was a kingdom far far away and then i am inputting this into my new model and from there model is generating a text so let's see if our new model is doing this in a way our uh, new data set is and there you go so you can see that as per this tiny stories here our model is generating uh, the full story on the basis of the prompt we have done now just imagine the use cases here if you are looking uh, to generate short stories or novel writing or any such fiction thing with the help of a large language model and on the basis of your own writing style create your own data set create or for example you want to follow a style of a very some popular uh, writer like, like Shakespeare Mark Twain just get their stories create a data set train your model on those stories give it a prompt and maybe you want to create some new twist like you want to create some uh, space stories or you know modern modern dead stories in a mark twain style you can do this easily by using this method and you can see that it is going on and on and on it won't go because uh, forever because we already have specified end of um, uh, us tokens here so we should be good but I hope that you appreciate that how easy and fine it is now to create the story. There you go. So and this is the end line we had given it. And this is a short story. It has generated just by using this prompt and using our own data set. Now sky is the limit here. And another thing is that uh, we are using a quantized version of our model. And we are not even using the full model and yet we were able to train this model on our data set and then use it in our code so that's it guys i hope that you enjoyed it really a big shout out to this unslaws tool again amazing tool i have done other videos too on tiny llama and always loved it so that's it i hope that you enjoyed it if you have any questions or if any issues let me know and i'll be happy to help and i'll drop the link to this coded video's description too and if you like the content, please consider subscribing to the channel. And if you're already subscribed, do me a favor and share this among your network as it helps a lot. Thanks for watching.